of the biggest barriers law students have to overcome when they go to law school is making the decision of whether they decide to go down the route of becoming a solicitor or barrister. Together, it takes six years for a solicitor to qualify. Now there are different routes to becoming a solicitor to, but today I'm just going to focus on the main route which is the university route. So someone who wants to become a solicitor generally tends to complete the three year LLB course undergraduate and this can be done at any university within the UK. However they can also decide to do a completely different undergraduate degree and then do the GDL which is the graduate diploma conversion course and that's a year long covering topics that you would have learned in the law degree. So it's basically a fast track route but it takes a little bit longer to get there. <laughs> The second stage after the LLB Law Undergraduate or the GDL is taking the LPC which in September 2021 is going to be called the SQE which is the Solicitor's Qualifying Examination. Now this enhances more practical learning and um, it's certainly like a master's degree but it teaches you the skills to purely just become a solicitor. Instead of essay writing like it was on the LPC, it turns essay writing into multiple choice questions. There are two parts to the SQB. The first part consists of legal research and writing. It does depend on what university you go to in terms of what model options would be available to you because different uh, lecturers do specialise in different things. However, the main ones tend to be tort law, criminal law, English legal systems, public administration, wills, special law, corporate law and estates and trusts. All these topics are split into two assessments with 180 multiple choice questions each, so quite intense. The second part covers practical skills such as client interviewing, advocacy, case matter analysis, legal research and written advice and legal drafting. These practical skills will be assessed in two different areas of these subjects, criminal practice, dispute resolution, property, wills, administration of estates and business practice. Part one is written and computer based. Now this is a recent change and so it accommodates people who need the flexibility such as people who have children or care and responsibilities or people who have certain disabilities and may need those adjustments in place. The cost of part one averages out to around 1,600. Now it can be done on loan which you can get a master's student loan um, but in doing the masters you would have to take an additional dissertation to qualify for that or it can be taken out of pocket. Often I have heard that people tend to opt for the two year part time course so they can work alongside it and fund it themselves. Part two on average is around 2850 but this is subject to what university you do go to. It might be a little bit more expensive in London because it's more central. The good thing about the SQE as opposed to the LPC is it gets your foot in the door and gives you experience. In a way voluntary work has become an essential requirement. Now on the SQE you are required to complete a year's worth of work experience in up to four organisations. Now this can be law centres, firms, a legal professional has to sign it off to make it a part of your course. To get on to the SQE, I think it is at least expected of you that for some universities you get a 2-1, um, some may accept you with a third, which is a 2-2. Now in terms of prior to taking the LPC, not a lot is generally expected of you until you get to that training contract stage, which um, at, at that point a lot more would be expected of you in terms of work experience, the skills you've got, the contacts you've made. Well, qualifying to be a barrister usually takes a little bit less 
less than the solicitor in practical terms however because it's more competitive it usually does take the same if not longer in the long run so it tends to be the same as a solicitor in that you have to do the three years LLB law undergraduate or the GDL. After that you have to do what's called the Bar Professional Training Course which is a year long. Before you apply for the Bar course you must join an inn. There are four inns in London which you can join. These are Gray's Inn, Lincoln's Inn, Middle Temple and in a temple. Now the Bar Professional Training Course does offer scholarships. To apply to these they start in November and there'll be interviews in March. This is similar to applying for an in also so you usually apply to them in the cohort together. For studying the BP TC, it will be a requirement to at least have a 2-1 in most universities and it will also be a requirement to at least have completed three mini pupillages. Now mini pupillages are just where you shadow a barrister for three days, not necessarily gaining skills but it shows that you have a commitment to the bar. Now the universities offering the bar course are quite limited. There is BPP University in London and Manchester, you have Cardiff University, City University London, the University of Law, University of Northumbria, Nottingham, Trent University and University of West England. In some court college advocacy, the different subjects you get on the Bar Professional Training course are obviously still subject to the university you go to, however the main ones are Advocacy cross-examination, advocacy examination in chief, advocacy submissions, civil litigation and dispute resolution, conference skills, criminal litigation, evidence and sentencing. Fees overall for the course are looking to average out around 13,000 but of course again this requires your own research in terms of what university you go to. If you wanted to go to London then you would probably be looking around 15,000 to 18,000. There tends to be more grants and scholarships because it's a very niche career and people who are already successful in that career tend to be more helpful of others. After you have completed the BPTC, you must then find pupillage, which is extremely competitive and hard to find. Most chambers only offer around one to three pupillages a year. And of course, now that COVID's happening and we're in a recession, this is only likely to double. It used to be the case that only one practical supervisor could supervise um, one pupil at a time. However, now two pupil supervisors can support one at a time and I think this is a good thing because it means you get different experiences, you learn different skills. If you were just to learn from one person you may naturally copy their style whereas learning off two people you may be more balanced in your approach and see both sides to doing things. I think it gives you a more varied skill set. Pupillage generally lasts 12 months however some organisations can apply to hold up to a 24 month pupillage. Important change in the year September 2020. Minimum pupillage grant raised to 18,000 from 15,000, which was a great change because a lot of people were protesting and did have concerns about um, how how poorly barristers were, pupil barristers were paid, considering the hard work they went to to get where they are. 18,000 tends to be more London, however, generally it averages out to around 15 to 16,000 elsewhere in the country. I do want to end this video by saying even though the solicitor and barrister route are popular choices for a law student because they embody the law degree itself, the things you've learned, the skills you've learned and you've worked your way up to either of those positions. However, don't worry if you're not in the position or you're not in that stage of your life to make a decision in whether to become a solicitor or barrister or, e or even whether you want to pursue becoming a solicitor or barrister. My Instagram page, Law Students Unite, provides insight into the legal industry and tries to provide insight into alternative career routes for those who are unsure of what they want to do and whether they actually want to follow the traditional routes of solicitor or barrister. Mm -hmm.